Hey, my name is Jeremy, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool masked watercolor effect in Illustrator CC. What I'm going to do is go to a new artboard, and you want to go to Free Pick. So if you go to Free Pick and you type in watercolor, you can also type in things like ink smudging, paint smudge. You can see you've got all these smudges. Obviously, you don't want to pick one that's very complex. You want to keep it simple. You want to have like a simple smudge like this, one of these ones. Something that's not too detailed because it may lag your computer if you don't have a decent computer. I'm just going to move this. So you can see you could probably use those ones, this one even. Um, this one I feel like too, it might have too many little details. So just keep that in mind when you downloaded it. So you can see here I have the file already open. And you might get some text and stuff. You can just literally turn the layers off or you just delete the stuff around it and you should have a shape like this. So when I select it, you can see it has all these artifacting, all these shapes, and we actually don't want that, but I'm gonna press Control C, go to my file, press Control V to paste it in. I'm gonna scale it up, and what I want to do is I wanna turn this into one shape, because I just want the outside, I just want the outline and that cool little detail. So what I'm gonna do is go to my Pathfinder tool. You can go to Window and Pathfinder to open that. So once I click that, I select my watercolor smudge and then I'm going to click the first shape mode, which is Unite. And this is going to unite all these little shapes and plus it into one big shape. So you can see now it's all one shape like this. And the thing is you might get some little extra pieces here and there. You can always go and like, if you don't need the pieces, you can go and just left click on it with the selection tool and delete those, those extra parts. If it's like too detailed or whatever. So. That's why I said get something simple so it might, it's just less lag. So anyway, we got this shape and you can see it's made an automatic group. But what we want to do, we want to turn everything into a compound path because it has all these little spots. There's all these different shapes outside of the big blob. So that's why we need to make a compound path. I'll click on object on the top left menu, go down to compound path and click make. So now you can see the shape in the top left corner says compound path. This just means that all the little shapes a plus together to met to be recognized as one shape and not like a group of, of shapes. So once we have this, what we can do is I can go locate my picture, whatever picture it is, drop it into Illustrator. You can find some good pictures on uh, Unsplash. Always love using that. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna press Control Shift and the square bracket to bring it behind the actual paint. I'm gonna select both of the objects. And I'm going to press Control 7. That's for the clipping mask um, shortcut. You can also go Object, Clipping Mask, and click Make. Once you click that, you're going to get this box for that pop-ups, and it says the top object is very complex, and it may cause the document to fail to print or preview, blah, blah, blah. Um, do you want to make the mask anyway? Just click Yes. So now you can see it's added the image to all the little details, even the shapes outside on the edges as well. You can see that because it's a compound path, it's just one shape. So I can literally move. If I use the direct selection tool, with the, which is the white mouse, I can move around the image. I can scale up the image, move it around and you can do so much with it. I can then, if I click out of it and then lift click on the shape, I can make the shape smaller. I can make it bigger. I can do like whatever. And I feel like this is a cool trick that you can do just by using clipping masks and a vector shape, you can do the same effect that you would have to do in Photoshop, but you can do it all in Illustrator. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful and it enables you to create some more interesting artwork and composition. Remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. It helps me out and I love creating videos based around design and branding and I'm always willing to get suggestions as well. So thanks so much for watching. I look forward to the next tutorial and I'll catch you there.